Hi, hi. Good morning. Thank you for joining. Okay, I'll wait just a bit more for others to join if you don't mind waiting a little bit. Okay, so how are you? How are you guys? How's your Monday? first day of the week okay so today um, um, I thought of doing um, some spring elements so um, it's perfect because of course spring has just begun for those who have spring on my side of the world I just have two seasons basically rainy and um, sunny so um, for those who have spring it's springtime and of course um, spring is absolutely wonderful because it has so many different colors so you can really go crazy with um, all the colors you can use them um, and so today i will try to cover some elements uh, starting with um, a birdhouse and some birds okay so very easy um, way of just doing things simple easy you can uh, Re replicate them we can change the colors around so it's just um, fun easy stuff that you can um, use for cards for your composition so just really um, just having fun okay so um, I've sketched some but later I haven't I didn't I wasn't able to sketch all so um, I hope you'll forgive if I sketch before I paint for some stuff later okay so for now um, I'll, I'll flip the camera down so that um, you'll be viewing my desk. Okay. All right. Let me just flip this around. Okay. So here we go. Um, here, as you can see, I've, uh, if you can see it a little bit, there you go. I've lightly sketched. And as usual, um, I'm going to share the finished um, sketch later on so that you guys can save it. You can. Um, download it and you can print it out for tracing if you want if you don't like um, sketching so I'll provide that but um, just give me extra time later because I haven't sketched them all okay so um, usually I sketch this in a, in a program so that the lines are much clearer than just um, using my own sketch okay so um, here you'll see um, a birdhouse and then two birds right here so again very cute very easy so that um, you can do this anytime and you can just have fun with it no um, intense techniques needed all right so today I'll just be preparing my um, palettes I'll start with the classical okay so this is one of our new palettes just so you know if you're wondering so this is classical right here Okay, so this is uh, one of our new palettes coming soon. This is um, stud uh, no, this is professional grade. Okay, so this are level up, one level up to our um, other sets. Um, this is the beginner sets that we have. Okay, so this is classical. So as uh, judging by the name, it's uh, it it contains the classic colors. Okay, so I just have this ready because you can always mix the colors that you need when you have your um, classic colors, your limited palette. Okay, so um, for the birds, um, one bird has uh, a red and green color and the other one has a uh, pinkish, reddish and bluish gray color. Okay, so I'll be using just my um, soft brush, my um, number seven, I think, number seven um, squirrel synthetic mix. Okay, so again, um, it's up to your own preference. If you want a, a snappier brush, then up to you. In my case, I want some softness because I want to be able to just uh, slowly go through the colors. Okay, so I'll start with um, the green. So the green is here on the, on the tips of the wings, or actually two-thirds of the wings, and then also the head part, and then a bit on the tail. Okay, so let me just... Uh, I think this is close enough for you guys right just let me know if uh, 
you need a closer look or something like that so I can adjust okay so I'm going to start with the green um, you can mix your own greens or you can um, use greens that you already have okay so um, another set that we have that is Vista has already a lot of different greens because it's well it's for um, landscape painting and such okay so I will use colors from here okay so I think permanent green light is perfect um, but again if you're not sure swatch your colors beforehand just have your um, swatch card ready so you can just try it out and see if it's the color you like if not try out the other colors so this one is jade green so this one is better okay so I'm going to use jade green to fill in the head and the wings and the tail so just a light wash okay so not nothing too intense yet again it's always better to start with a lighter wash than going overboard and having a hard time lifting it off okay so I'm going to start right here so it's not the whole head it's the lower part of the head and then I will just again add water to the tip of my br to my brush and then add it to the edges so that the edges will be softer instead of a harsh swatch of color it will have softer edge which is what I'm looking for so that later when it when I need when I add red it's gonna blend um, beautifully instead of you know splotches of color Okay, and then now I'm going to go to the wings part. Okay, I'll just bring it closer because the sketch is light. Okay, so the wings part right here. Okay, so I why don't I zoom further? Because I'm working on smaller works right now. Okay, there you go. Let me add a little bit more light. Okay. So next, some green on the wings. Again, just a light wash so if you feel like it's too dark you can always add water even if you've already applied it to the paper so nice paper is um, generally really more forgiving so this one for example is um, cold press 300 GSM so it's um, it's more forgiving when I for example applied a too thick or too heavy paint and then I want to soften it I can just add water to it but generally I have a harder time doing this when it's uh, the much cheaper paper which I also use when I'm being thrif extra thrifty and I'm just like working on like practice work okay and there's also the the wing behind so a part of the other wing is showing behind okay so I'm just adding again just a light wash Okay, and again to the tip of the tail. Okay, so make use of your mixing plate so that you can you don't have you don't need to have a special expensive mixing plate. Okay, I, I started with plastic uh, mixing plates and also um, just general white ceramic plate. Okay, so now that I have that, um, it looks like this. Okay, so that's your first layer. Of green so before you add the red um, some sections are still not dry so wait for it to dry so you can work on other sections first that you know are already dry okay so that they don't mix and create muddy colors instead they will um, overlap and create uh, better colors hi Joe thank you for joining okay so now we have um, a warm red for the rest of the body Okay, so uh, I will go back to the classical and use um, Pirol Red. Okay, so we have Pirol Red here. Let's test it out. Okay, so I always like to test it out so I have, I have uh, less regrets later on. Okay, so I have that red. It's okay. I like it. It's good enough. Okay, so before I would, I would just put some here on my mixing area okay are you like me and you have like very messy mixing areas I don't 
I don't want to wash off the paint that I know I can still use so I try to use every little space that I see okay so now I am applying it here to the head part and then I'm again wet my brush and then going over the edge okay So you can do it like this, like wet on dry, or you can do a wet on wet if you work much more quickly. So it's up to you, okay? So again, there's always um, different methods of doing this, depending on your comfort and your preference. In my case, I like to do it like this. I just generally have more control when I'm doing wet on dry but maybe you like the more abstract effect that wet and wet gives you. So you can also try it out that way. Okay, and then for the body, I'm going to wet it first because I want to have like a very soft red color. And then I'm just going to drop more concentrated areas of red here and there again don't overdo it you actually want the mopling and uneven colors here and there because it makes it even look more organic okay so that's the kind of effect you can get if you you wet it first and then you drop your color um, in so it it softens it it helps it spread softly but of course you won't be able to control it so much because it's um, the surface is wet so the the pigment will travel as far as it can on the wet surface okay so i'm just adding extra color to the areas that are darker have more shadow okay so already it's looking like a bird to me it is at least i hope you, i hope it looks like a bird to you as well okay so if you if you're not a fan of mixing then i suppose you can brought buy already the colors ready like the greens but i really recommend that you also try mixing your own because you won't be you you don't want to buy 50 different colors right you you want to be able to survive with just a few and be able to mix the colors that you need uh, when you need them Okay, so I'm going to wet again the, the top part of the head. Okay, so don't over rub because it will also lift off the paint. So just the right amount of pressure. And then I will add um, red here just to give it a darker shape. Okay, there you go. So a bit of darker here, here, and also here on the wings. Yes, yeah, so this set... It's really beautiful it's uh i always use it because it's it's been a favorite these are the colors when they're swatched out this is classical so as you can see two kinds of yellow three kinds of blue you can totally mix so many different kinds of greens already just with a classical okay so um, i'll let you guys know as soon as it's out for sale right now it's not yet but it's it will be soon okay so um, I'm going to add again here in the wings. So before that, I would just again wet this. So I started with wet and dry and now I'm doing a bit of wet and wet. Okay, and then I also help the color spread a little bit on the edges. So you can do that too. Okay, so just really play around, experiment. You won't always get what you want or what you were aiming for but you will learn for sure okay yes I actually these are um, honestly one of uh, my favorites so this is from the Turner collection um, this Turner collection is um, 13 brushes one palette knife but I really love these synthetic um, squirrel mix so it's a mix of synthetic and squirrel it's nice it has softness at the same time it snaps back into shape so it's not too soft that it stays, you know, like that, like other brushes. So that's why I, I love these. Okay, so this is the first bird. So I will leave this first because I want it to be really, really dry. 
before I add the um, other details like just uh, some lines for the texture of the wings and uh, you know feather like texture so let's move on to the other bird okay so this one is um, a, there's a bit of pinkish tinge uh, under and at the tips of the wings and then the top is um, blue um, and then some gray as well okay so let's start with the lighter color in which is the red normally I don't start with red but in this bird it's just a very light wash so I can start with that so when you do your watercolor you start with the lighter colors or the lighter washes that you see and then move um, towards the darker ones so again just the same red but watered down and again you can always test it out first to make sure it's light enough is it the color really that you're looking for or maybe not so you still have time to adjust okay so I'm going to again apply it here to the bottom half of the bird okay wash my brush and then wet the whole back to the edge of the red so for this I'm going to do a wet and wet and then get my blue so for the blue I'm going to use um, ultramarine okay so it's already wet so again it will give your bird softer a softer look when the blue spreads okay so again I suggest that you experiment with both techniques try it out using wet and dry try it out using wet and wet and see how you like them okay how they differ from each other what effects you get okay so this is wet and wet as you can see it's bleeding ever so slightly towards um, the red but not not too much just the round the, the right amount of bleeding that um, I'm fine with so that's why it's also important to know how wet you should make a surface because if it's too wet it's gonna travel so far and it it can make it look it can ruin the effect okay so in this case um, it's good enough so okay I'm happy with that later on I can always fix whatever I need uh, I think needs fixing okay so here there's a bit there's an overlap because this is the wing connecting to the body so I'm just rubbing the red out here and then spreading it outwards towards the tip adding more red here where there's a bit more darker red and then I will drop in some blue connecting here okay so again be careful with your colors don't over mix don't over scrub you want your colors to just gently mix with each other not too much so that they they still maintain their colors and they don't you know become muddy it's so easy to muddy things when you overwork them okay so right now um, I have two birds almost finished as you can see very easy very simple uh, very loose kind of uh, bird painting so you don't need to go into extreme detail you get the, the right shape of the bird and also the right um, texture later on when we add um, some lines here and there and while it's still wet I can add more color okay so I'm leaving the the beak for later because I want everything to be certainly very dry okay so let me add blue here to the other wing so don't worry um, if you're scared of sketching this um, I will uh, work on it after the live and then I will share the, the sketch here on this event so you can you feel free to save that and to use it as your guide or as your as for tracing
Okay, I know some of you, you don't really want to sketch, you'd rather you want to paint more. So you can do that or um, you can just use it as a guide. Okay, so I have a pale blue here. Later, I will add some bit of gray to that. Okay, but right now, this is what it looks like. Okay, I like it. Okay, so let me just switch brushes since I, I want to add some um, detail to the wings and um, to the edge and to the head. Okay, so let me just... Okay, so now I'm going to use um, number one round brush from the fine line. So this is from a different set. So this is um, uh, our set that contains um, all detail brushes. So this is a number one round brush. I just like to switch to um, detail brushes when I'm working on details because it's really it really makes it so much easier and it's hard to make a mistake. Okay, so let me just pop out the green from the other set so I can have it here. Okay, so this is the thing nice thing about sets like this is, is that you can just pop the colors that you need out if you want them to just be handy. Okay, so I have green right here, um, the jade green, so I'm just going to test out if it's okay. I don't want it to be too dark. Okay, so for the green areas, I'm just, oopsies, okay, let me just fix this. <laughs> and it's fixed, okay, so don't cry. And also, this is the nice thing about nice paper. You can you can do a little bit of scrubbing, and it's it's gonna you know take it. Okay, so let me just go back to my green. Okay. So using green, I will apply to the head uh, like a C curves. Okay, so I will start. A little bit bigger right here. And then becoming um, towards like a triangle and uh, smaller C's until they slowly disappear, like so. Okay, so you've given it some texture. So, for sort of areas that you want to soften, just go over it with your brush. You can soften it with water. Okay, so I like to do that. For some parts that I feel are too harsh, I just add water, go over them a little bit, and they become softer. Okay, so now um, I will do the same for the, I will work on the greens first, and the, then there are also some reds. So just the darker version of the colors that I use. The same green is used for the first layer and also for the details. Okay, so let me just add first lines. For the feathers, okay, so sometimes I need a little bit more water. Of course, because the brushes are smaller, you will also be needing. Um, you you'll have to go back and forth, and you need more water and pigment. You'll run out uh, much more quickly. Okay, so now that I have that, you can make some parts a bit darker, some parts lighter just to vary the the volume okay and then you can also add C curves you know bigger ends of the feathers like so and then you can add a few more layers nothing too extremely detailed okay just very easy just quick work and already it makes so much difference okay let me add more green so as you can see quite easy with a detail brush you, you won't be able be able to do big details you know because it's so small it's just impossible okay so now that we're done with the greens we'll go to the red using the same style. Again, you can just always check 
if it's too dark or not. And do the same thing, C. A little bit of C curves here. Just to connect it to the green. And also a little bit on the top of the head. So just to really connect them. Don't overdo it because otherwise you'd have to really detail this. So these are just more suggestive. Okay, so suggestive um, texture, feather, and also down here. Okay, so this is really a quick way to paint a bird that's not cartoony but not hyper realistic. So this is a loose painting of a bird or as loose as I can take it. <laughs> it's really a challenge for me to paint more loosely. So this is as loose as I can get at the moment. Okay, so let me just soften the edges of this. Again, what I do is I just add a little bit of water to the edge and it becomes looser. So just little textures and there you go okay so uh, let's just add a little bit of darker green here just to separate the back wing from the front let's add a little bit of shadow okay there you go now let's work on the eyes and the beak so this is just brown so i can use um raw umber for this from the same set right here okay so it's just the nice nice brown So since this is tiny, I'm just going to paint directly. So try to leave a white spot on the eye for the reflection. It's really going to uh, make it look more real. So if you feel like it's too light, you can always add another layer or you can mix um, a little bit of uh, blue to your brown to darken it. Okay, so you don't need black. My, my favorite way of getting a, a sort of black is mixing brown with uh, dark blue. So ultramarine and and burnt umber um, or raw umber uh, will give you a nice um, kind of black. Okay, so there's the beak and one bird's done. Okay. Oh wait, um, I also have to do the feet. Okay, so the feet are um, not clawed like this, but open like this. Okay, so let me add that. It's right here. So let's add feet that are, it's like when they're open and when they're about to land on something like that. And then let's also add the one behind. Okay, so we have this. Now let's go on to the other one. Okay, so this one just needs um, a little bit of shadowing. So let's uh, go back to the previous brush, the number seven round brush. Okay. So let's see, I'm using the same blue, which was um, ultramarine. Okay, let's have the ultramarine right here. Then let's add a bit of gray. Okay, so I have some gray here from the other set. So this is an extra color. So it's 12 plus one. So this gray is like a freebie. Okay, so let's add some gray to it. And then add a little bit of depth to this. So this time I'm using a bigger brush to create thicker lines. You can also do that if you don't want too thin lines. Also adding here. 
see. Have patience to keep mixing your mixtures if you run out. Just remember your um, ratio. And as always, just test it out on your swatch card. Okay. And then if you feel like some lines are too harsh, just go over them with a wet brush on the edges and just soften those edges. Okay. A very, very simple but very easy and very effective solution. My favorite go-to. And it's really very doable and very fixable, especially if you're using nice paper. It can really take a lot of abuse and corrections compared to a much cheaper paper. Don't worry, I use both, so you know, it's also a challenge starting with cheaper paper because of course you always start with cheaper stuff since you're still learning, but later on, once you get better um, and you start using better stuff, you will really feel the difference. Okay, so I'm just going to add extra feel like it's too it's too light okay I like this better and then I'm going to add just extra detail right here just a very light outline okay so now that I have that um, I didn't touch the upper part so I can just work on the beak using the same color earlier the raw umber Okay. See raw umber. So this beak is more um it's open so you'll see the top part and then there's also the lower beak. Okay, so take your time, use a nice brush with a pointy tip so that you get the nice pointy tip of the beak. You actually want that really. Okay, and then I'm just going to add water to my brush and to the tip of the color and fade it inwards. Okay, so that it has a softer edge. And there you go. And then for the eye, just the same brown. Again, you can always add another layer later or a darker color. and leave a tiny white spot for the reflection because their eyes are, are glossy so they will have reflection. Okay, so you have these two birds. Um, you can add extra detail for the wings again um, using the same color, darker. Okay, I'm gonna add gray because I want it to be a deeper color. And then again, test it out if you're not sure. Okay, so let's add some lines for for the wings. Nothing too extreme, just a few lines here and there. Also the tail. Okay. And again, you can always soften the parts that you feel are too too much. You can go over them with a wet brush. Okay, and the birds are finished. Okay, quick and easy birds, but very beautiful, very spring-like. Okay, now let's go to another rather really easy one, the birdhouse. So you can totally combine these two elements together and create <clears throat> a composition with a birdhouse, a bigger one of course, and these birds. Okay, so let's just say this birdhouse is in the background, so it's smaller. Okay, so for the birdhouse, um, you can choose whatever colors you like. 
I'll go with uh, something bright. I'll choose um, lemon yellow. Okay, so I'm going to use these two yellows, lemon yellow and then Hansa yellow. Okay, so let's start with um, lemon yellow for the base. Let's just let's prep this first. Okay, so this is another really, really easy one. So just start with a wash. Uh, you can totally change the colors around, okay? So originally I created um, another one of this in, in blue, like this. So now I'm doing it in yellow. So again, you can feel free to use the colors that you prefer. Okay. I always just want a yellow birdhouse. It's such a cheery color. Have you guys ever built your own birdhouses? always wanted to learn carpentry it seems like a very very useful skill to have you can build your own furniture and such the most that I've made is the my dog's um, bowl stand is um, her water and bowl stand that's it <laughs> That's all the carpentry skills that I have. Very basic, very simple. Okay, so there I've, I've done the first yellow. So just a bright um, lemon yellow color. Okay, so let's wait for that to dry. Or again, you can always use a blow dryer. Okay, so it's up to you to... Up to your uh, working time, you know, your patience. If you're not in a hurry, then you can totally wait for it to just dry naturally. Okay, so in my case, I'm going to use a blow dryer so that you don't have to wait long. Okay, and then I'm going to use the um, deeper yellow for the lines. Okay, so I'm, again, I'm going to switch to my uh, number one round brush. Wow, bad houses. That's interesting. What does that look like? <laughs> awesome. Okay, so you sing now. You sing um, Hansa Yellow. Uh, hmm. I think I'm gonna mix a little bit of um, Indian Red with it just to deepen it further. Okay, so some Indian Red with Hansa Yellow. Okay, so. Hansa yellow is like a, a really warm golden yellow. Uh, well, the medium, of course. There's Hansa yellow light, which is oh, a bit uh, between the two of between the two of these. So you'll find different kinds of um, hand of yellow, Hansa yellow, cadmium yellows. Okay, so now we'll do the um, the lines on the birdhouse to give it texture, um, like a wood. Uh, wood texture okay so nothing too complicated just some deep lines on some parts like so so it's like slats of wood joined together So these will have the deeper shadows because this is where they, they go side by side like that. And then the wood, of course, will have um, grains as well. So for that, we'll, we'll add more lines, but now um, finer and less with less shadow. Okay, so let's add the lines here and there. So you can make this very detailed. You can add as much lines as you can, up to you. 
just be just remember that of course the grains won't have the same size they will vary oh interesting <laughs> so do you keep it around your house like you hang it around your house and bats stay there interesting okay so vary the the size of the lines some will be thicker some will be thinner and you don't have to to create a long straight line you can um, split them okay you don't have to if you look at the grains of wood they're not all even side by side right they're curving a bit some are thicker some are thinner so try to mimic that so that it looks more real okay so you can also try to vary the mixtures make some deeper some lighter thinner thicker okay so just try to create variations so that um, it it will give you a more realistic wood grain effect okay so you don't have to do to do straight lines that are you know connected you can space them apart some lines can be suggestive Okay, so I'm also going to add more shadow to the edges, like this, just to define the shape even further, but nothing too intense, just to help shape the birdhouse. Okay, so what I like to do... Um, deeper here at the top and at the bottom okay and now you have uh, your bright cherry yellow body of the birdhouse then you can also add some shadowing down here okay because this is on top so there's an, an overhang so the overhang will definitely um, give you some shadow oh interesting Okay, so if you have too many bugs, then you can balance it out with bats. Though I'm a bit afraid when they start swooping down. I don't, I'm sure they, they don't care about me, but I just get startled. Okay, so again, with my Hansa Yellow Deep and a bit of Indian Red, I'm going to use that mixture to create the shadow under this overhang of the mini roof. Of the birdhouse so details like this are important to add because they will really make things look realistic okay and again I'm softening the edges so it's not too too stark okay so now that I have this um, I just need to work on the top and the bottom the roof and the um, base so I'll just quickly dry this so that they, it won't get um, muddy So let's do the roof. Okay, let's go with the brown. Or maybe this Indian red. I think the Indian red would go well with the, the yellow. So I'm just going to try it out. Okay, I think I like it. So I'm going to go with the Indian red. So it's like a brick red, really. So I'm just going to create my mixture right here. So just try to mix your mixtures on your mixing area first so that you get to um, prepare it before you use it on your work, okay? So it's an extra step, but really a lot of the, the process happens on your mixing plate. So um, just, you know, um, learn the habit, you know. It's just a matter of... Um, 
becoming more comfortable with the process when I was starting out I would just go from my pad directly to my paper and oh my gosh it really creates a lot of problems it gives you a much harder time of controlling things so just make use of your mixing plate or your mixing area that way um, you can really plan it out and as you can see from my my swatch card it's really very helpful because you can really test out your colors before you commit to them sometimes what may look nice on the pan may not work well with your other colors so actually putting them down side by side and checking your palette will really make a huge difference okay so this is just the first layer okay so just a an overall wash over then if you feel like you already want to darken areas while it's still wet you can already do that you can already drop in extra color or a deeper color of your mixture so while your paper is still wet it will still spread okay and then i'm going I will add now to the top as well, same color but deeper on the edges, brush it upwards and then from the center as well from the peak, I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so take your time um, you can you know do one thing you can do several versions of this one birdhouse you can have several hanging on a tree that we so pretty in different colors okay and now for the inside um, this is uh, going to be shadowed so I'm going to use the same mixture of Hansa yellow and the Indian red Okay, and then give it the illusion of um, shadow. So you can totally shift to a detail brush for this, or if you have nice um, round brushes, they usually nice round brushes have. Um, nice tips so you don't really need to switch to smaller brushes if it's not too small like this that's why I like this brush because I can use it for um, smaller areas that are not extremely small but need more um, detail so there you go okay so um, this is done of course you can add more texture you can make it darker you can add more grains feel free to do that but this is like the basic of it and then you can totally add more detail you can even um, make this um, a different texture you can add um, I don't know make it look like a painted bird box with um, you know design up to you but here are the two birds and the birdhouse and let's see do we have time for okay let's do the this one um, the watering can because this is also nice with a watering can you can just uh, create a watering can on its own or you can um, add uh, flowers on top you know watering can with flowers or um, you can even create a watering can with a design here so you can um, do so many different designs for this as well Okay, so let's start with um, sketching it out first. Okay, so I haven't sketched this, so bear with me. Um, okay, let's start with the basic shape. And you can even change the shape. You can make it more um, um, 
level like this like um, parallel sides or you can have it even a stouter one up to you you can totally personalize okay so let's start with the base okay so it doesn't have to be exactly the same okay so how you curve the top should be similar to how you curve the bottom okay and then you add the the spout okay So the spout is higher than here so that even if you fill this up with water up to the rim it won't leak out okay and then this part at the top even this you can totally have fun with this you can make it bigger wider circle Okay, and then the holes I'll just add later when I paint. Okay, then I will add now the details. Here as well. So this is the nice thing about watering cans is you can also do so much, just changing around the shape, the color. And again, just having it as a watering can for watering or a watering can that's been turned into a pot with flowers or herbs or whatever on top. And for the bottom as well. Okay, so um, I will create digital sketches of this and then I will share it to you guys. Not to worry, maybe by tomorrow. So just um, watch out for them. Okay, so there you go. Um, I've had I have it ready, like here. Very quick and easy to sketch. Actually, it doesn't have to be extremely perfect. Okay, so just go over the parts where you feel you've drawn too dark. Okay, use your eraser. Make make sure that your lines aren't too deep and too dark especially if you don't want them to show up later on in your final work okay so if you're happy with it then you can already um, paint okay so for this one um, I actually like this color so um, let's go and use that color so this is um, from the Sereno palette so oh no this is not Sereno sorry this is from Allegro so this color is chromium oxide okay so you'll find this color normally for people with especially for people who like to paint um, people humans skin tones chromium oxide is uh, a great mid-tone you know uh, mid-tones usually have a cooler um, color so um, it's perfect for skin tones um, chromium oxide is really wonderful okay so um let's start so allegro has um allegro is our palette with the warm colors and it's the color it's a palette that's perfect for skin tones as you can see lots of browns and um this not this one sorry <laughs> lots of browns reds and um, yellows so um let's start with wetting the whole area this one first and then the spout later on okay so let's start with this area let's just wet it okay make sure to clean your brush in between colors especially if you have favorites that you often use i have made that mistake so often i do a wash and it has a tinge of another color that's uh, just not gonna go well with the color that i plan to use okay so make sure it's wet enough but not extremely wet especially if you're using a paper that's not too thick okay because it won't be as um, forgiving okay oh sorry it actually was sereno who has the chromium oxide okay so here uh, chromium oxide is this it looks really deep okay so uh, i take it back it's sereno <laughs> okay so let's do chromium oxide 
and let's just apply it overall on the wet surface. Okay, you can switch to a bigger brush for this to, so that you can cover the space much more quickly. Or just twist your brush around and use the body, the whole body. That's what makes our round brushes really versatile. Okay, so now that I have this, I can now add um, thicker mixtures here and there. Okay, so this side, just like here on the top, will have more shadow. So let's just add that. So the one thing that I like about this color is that it's also um, granulating. Like you can see the, the grains. I love it. It's very textured. So if you're a fan of that, then you love this color as well. So I like to use it for this because it gives it just a very interesting texture. Okay, so this paper is actually much thinner, so that's why you can s there's already some curling going on, some buckling. So if you like to be able to do washes like this, and you don't like paper that curls because, of course, the colors will pull on the sections where it curls, so you'll have to keep watching your painting. So if you plan to do heavy washes, then you use thicker paper, okay? Because you will really have a harder time with thin paper. Okay, or you can stretch your paper beforehand to make sure it's very tight. That way, it will also minimize the curling, okay? So now, um, first layer is done. So what I'll do is I'm going to um, dry it first. there's a little bit of curling okay so you have to be careful that happens because you know the the water and pigment will settle on the, the lower areas okay so um, let's continue with the spout so I just wanted it to be dry first so that it doesn't I will have this nice separation okay so doing the same thing I'm going to wet the section okay so wet it first And then add your mixture okay so again this is chromium oxide a nice subdued green wonderful green I love it it's a, it's like a very vintage color it's like when you have stuff that has aged and it has this nice green um, patina over it. It's like that. Okay, so I'm just slowly spreading the colors forward. I'd rather colored, there's just one. Okay, so the bottom part is slightly darker because of course it will be shadowed since it's down there. So try to keep the shape of your um, spout. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of color down here to just add a little bit of shadow. Just slight, nothing too intense. Anyway, you can still add later if you feel like it needs more color or more volume or more shadow. 
Okay, so work in layers. Just um, have the patience to wait and um, observe it better once everything has fully dried. Okay, so right now it looks very rustic. I like it. Um, it's what I'm going for. Okay, so now I'm just going to add the details of um, these parts here, here, and here. Okay, so let me just do that. So just using the same chromium oxide, just with more pigment. Okay, so just preparing my mixture here. So I will go under. Here above and under. Okay, and then I will just soften the lines. I don't want it to be too intense. I just want a suggestion of the shape. Okay, so as you can see, um, this is a favorite technique of mine, like applying the color and then just removing it slowly by layers if I feel like it's too dark or if I want to soften the edges. Okay, and there you go. I have a definition of the shape but nothing too intense. So I don't like to have stark lines unless, you know, um, it really shows up in the in my reference if it's really a very definite line. But otherwise, I would go for a more suggestive um, take. Anyway, you can always make it more definitive later on if you decide. But at least this one gives you more um, options to work around with. Okay, and now let's do it for the bottom as well. So the same thing, a line here. And then I'm going to go over it with my brush just to soften the edges. slightly okay so just control because you want just to soften but not to make it disappear because you actually want to see that there's a shape on this section that's why there's a line and then I'm going to darken the edges for the shadow and also at the bottom okay of course there are also there will also be some shadowing here where it will meet your surface Okay, and for the final detail, it's the holes here. So I will switch to my um, number one brush so that I can just control the, the shape. Okay, so just add your circles. You can make it, you can make them bigger. You can make a lot of them or just a few up to you. Make sure there's enough that it doesn't look weird. In my case, I'm just going to do like three layers. Okay, but not in a row, okay? There you go. So with the holes, they look so much better. Okay, so again, feel free to personalize this. You can again add flowers or leaves or something sprouting on top, or you can change the color of this. You can even add design. You make it make it a more cheerful watering can. Okay. Oh wait, <laughs> there's one part I forgot. Duh. Okay, the handle. Let's just draw this quickly. 
Okay, so just the simple handle. I, oh, you can also personalize the handle. Let's uh, let's create a a wider handle compared to, or a longer handle compared to the one on top. So there's so many different ways you can have fun with this with the watering can, the shape, the color, the design. Okay, so there you go. This one has a s smaller handle like this. This one bigger, longer. Okay, so using just the same color, chromium oxide. First, a light wash. Okay, and while it's still wet, I will drop in color to add the shadows which will be down here and also here okay and then I will just move it upwards with this let this do slightly meet and then just again with your wet brush soften the edges And there you go okay so um, here are the things that we did we did today I can't do more because it's gonna be so long but already you can do so much with these you can you can um, do several birdhouses you can hang them all in a tree different colors beautiful you can do birds and birdhouses together or just separately and you can also do your watering can and then you can do so much to this you can um, this is just like the basic the most basic you can do but you can um, add so many details and you can create this so very in so many different ways okay so um, I hope you guys uh, found that useful I hope you've tried out because it's really a fun theme to um, to have okay so this is how it looks like when I paint stuff everywhere Okay, so let me just go back to my face, okay? Thank you everyone for joining me and here are the finished stuff, okay? So I hope you'll try this out, especially the birds. They look really cute, but super easy to do. So you can, you can totally do this, like really. Just, I don't know, several layers and um, they're also very, um, very light washes, very, um, you know, light painting, not nothing too detailed. And also this, especially the watering can, I love it. So you can totally try this out. And all of this can be um, even, you know, you can even add flowers because of course spring are flowers, but you know, we've done so many flowers already. So I thought to focus on these things. So please do try it out. And if you do, don't forget to share it with the group. Um, so that people will be inspired to try them as well and i'll be so happy to see your own versions so um, i'll have the sketches if not late today um, by tomorrow so i will add it here to the event and also to to this that i will share tomorrow i, will, I always share the the replays so i will also add the sketches there okay so thank you guys for joining me and i hope you'll try this out and have a good day bye